Hey everybody, welcome to another Umqua Signature Tying Session. I'm Dave Chouinard and I'm here to show you Chewy's Minner. The Minner is one of the best sight casting minnow patterns you'll ever fish. See, for years, all minnow patterns, for the most part, if they added weight, they were either going to use dumbbell or bead chain eyes. And those eyes, when you look, are tied perpendicular into the fly and they make a heck of a splash or a plop when they land. They also catch grass, and they also add resistance to sinking and jigging properly just because of the way they're tied in. So over the years, I wanted to do something about that, and I stumbled upon the concept of using tungsten because it is the smallest diameter heavy weight you can find, and these Umqua Jig Bomb beads, I've come up with a way to mount them under the fly, right underneath the cheek, if you will. They'll flip any hook over upside down with the hook facing up, so it'll be somewhat weedless and great for flats. And these beads are available in all sorts of sizes. So you're able to really accurately weight all sizes. That's very specifically important, if you will, for when you're fishing eight inches, 10 inches, 15 inches, 30 inches. So you'll be able to adjust that. So let's dive in and look at this. This pattern has um, a little mylar tubing tail and, and, and flat body braid, Arctic Fox, a little craft fur and some deer hair. It's a somewhat uh, quick tie and very effective for all sorts of species. So let's go dive right in. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our Gamagatsu SL11 3H hooks. Uh, you can tie this minnow pattern in all sizes and in the bigger sizes, feel free to go ahead and use two beads to add even more weight or to fine tune the weight. We're gonna tie this one in a size six. We're gonna put that right in our vise and put a nice, uh, we're gonna use a UTC, like a 140 thread here. And we're gonna go start that base and we're gonna run that base right on to the back, okay? Now, the first thing you do in all these survive entry flies is you go ahead and you add your weight. So think about what's the depth of water you wanna tie in your, uh, tie a fly. In your boxes, you'll find it's gonna be very effective to have the same size fly in different weights. It's not that you need a different size fly, it's that you need a different weight fly. Go ahead and take some 019 mono um, that you can use, uh, that's the right diameter, if you will. And I flattened it with my uh, little uh, smooth needle nose pliers, and I'm gonna put that right behind the eye like that. Go ahead and grab a 2.5 millimeter Umqua tungsten jig bomb bead. This tungsten bead has a convex and a concave side. I kind of like to put the, uh, uh, the round side forward, the convex, and have the concave behind it so I can push the bead back even, get the, fly, uh, the thread right up over it, do a few wraps, and then take those same smooth pliers and go ahead and flatten that a little bit to reduce the taper when you go ahead and whip this off. You can snip that right off. Now, if you were going to make this be a weedless fly, you could use that same 019 or maybe go up to 023. Before I do that, though, I'm going to go ahead and X-wrap this. Sorry about that, but let's go ahead and do that. And that bead, you'll notice, is right there. Now, look, you can push back on that bead and look how she rotates back. We can do that later to tuck it in underneath material. So I'll leave it somewhat perpendicular now. Now, as I was saying before, right now would be the time to take either 019 or maybe 021 and put yourself a double weed guard here if you wish. I'm not gonna do that tonight for this pattern because most of the time I don't have it, but I do always carry some in the fly box with some weed guards. All right, let's run that down. We're gonna go use some pearl mylar cord, pretty typical mylar cord. Cut yourself about a maybe five eighths to three quarter inch piece, depending on uh, your pattern uh, with how big it is, okay? And you're gonna go ahead and remove out that cord. And let's go ahead and tie that in. I like to put the tips where it goes right up to, if you will, where that mono, the 019, stop because it makes a consistent taper then. So that mono took that I flattened took a little space and you'll make a nice underbody. It's like painting. You can't hide what's underneath sometimes. So it just makes life a little easier. I ran it down the bend of the hook a little because that helps the fly keel. Notice that'll have less water resistance angled like that. It'll help flip it all over. It's all part of the deal. You can take your scissor, scissors or better yet take a bodkin and go ahead and tease that tail right out. Okay. You can make this tail any length you want. If you want more flash than not, I tend to make mine uh, maybe about a half an inch or a size six. Yeah, it's close to that, but uh, 
no, no fear there, whatever you feel. All right, give yourself a little taper on that. Uh, I'm just cutting some of the ends on a slight angle. That'll give it a nice little fine taper. We're ready now for our flat diamond braid in a pearl. Okay, pretty straightforward here. Just go ahead and tie that in. I slide it back a little and so that it's again tapered kind of flowing right into that mono, bring it right down. We're gonna advance this all the way forward and do a quick half hitch to lock that off and we're able to breathe. Bring your bobbin cradle over. I know you can't see that, but you'll notice how my thread is going straight across. And now go ahead and wrap that pearl diamond braid, avoiding the point of that hook, and you can do a nice taper to this, okay? And if you see it's a little thin, you could go back with that diamond braid and make it a little thicker in this section if you wish, and then go back and forth around that bead, okay, like that. And that gives us, that's a little too much, a little aggressive there. I'll pull it back a smidge, and that looks pretty darn good, okay? Wrap that off with a couple turns, and we're all set there. Clip that off. Okay, this is a fairly straightforward pattern. I'm gonna lean that bead now a little back now. You can see how that's nice to do. We got our weight, we got our whole body. This is more of a minnow shrimp kind of combination, but it really is a minnow pattern with the way it swims and jigs. So we're gonna go ahead and take our Arctic Fox, cut yourself a little clump of that. It's just great material, okay, for what we're doing here on the flats. It has, uh, it, it doesn't hold water. It instantly blows up, has a lot of life. That's a perfect length there. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie that in right behind that bead, like so. And then whenever you tie material in, advance that thread and do an extra turn or two. That's the cam lock, if you will, okay? That tension will loosen up if you don't do those couple extra turns. Sorry about pulling that out. I keep forgetting about your lens there, but I just wanted to stroke it and feel it a little bit and look at it. I like that length to the hook gap. It's really looking like a fish catch and fly right now. So uh, in the right size and length. So I'm gonna go ahead and now top that with some uh, crystal flash, okay? Uh, this is uh, some gray ghost pearl. You can mix around the colors as you wish. I don't think it's that critical when it comes to patterns. And we're gonna do two, two pieces here. Whoops, so funny, I put one piece in my mouth to hold it. <laughs> Can't do that, he won't understand what I'm saying. All right, we're gonna take two pieces here and we're gonna put them on one side here, right towards me. Just do a couple wraps to hold them. Bring the other two across, okay? And then you can go ahead and organize these pieces on each side there, just like that, okay? Pretty straightforward. Stroke them back and then just trim them to length, somewhat even with that Arctic Fox, okay? Now, we're gonna go ahead, we're pretty much getting there now. This is a very straightforward pattern. And we're gonna go ahead and top it with a little bit of chartreuse fish hair, okay? This fish hair is um, bright green. Uh, I think it's uh, number 34. It really does look like a nice chartreuse. We're not gonna do too much of that, okay? We just want a little topper on it. If you have too much under fur, feel free to just pull out that under fur by holding the tips, okay? And get that right amount of under fur. And then check your length to taper right along the top. And we're going to go ahead and tie that in right in front of the last row of tan. And you can trim that off. Okay. We're looking good here. I'm going to just pop that out of the vise real quick just to straighten out. Look at that beautiful taper. Okay. Uh, you can put the crystal flash after if you wish when you do these. Sometimes I kind of like burying the crystal flash in there. It gives it a little integrity. You're still going to see it shine through. It's in there. Maybe you don't want it as obnoxious. So play with uh, that, but you can do it either way. All we have left is some deer hair now. Okay. I used to stack this and have really even ends. It almost is too even, like a collar or something. And I kind of like the randomness of nature. So just go in and, and clip yourself a clump of deer hair, okay? You're gonna see some of these patches are really crazy with some ends, and so if you wish to pull some of those ends out, you can, okay? And the amount of the deer hair is really dependent on the fly size. I do sometimes go a little heavier because I'm gonna do a lot of trimming, okay? I'm gonna just pick out a couple of these random crazy hairs in this. That looks pretty darn good. If have your thread in the right spot here. I'm going to advance it forward here 
and I'm going to spin this thread a little bit. You'll notice it's spinning, okay? Uh, and that's going to enable the loop to go right back on top of me. I'm going to extend this deer hair about that far. I spread it on this pattern on both sides because you're not going to be able to spin this deer hair. And I just come down and I wind it through. Wiggle that thread as you come through, okay? And you can push back all of this deer hair like that and then wiggle it through and advance that thread in front of that. Now, that's our first turn. We're gonna go ahead and do another, sorry about that. We're gonna go ahead and do another turn. And again, a lot of times with traditional deer hair, you would be spinning, okay, but our hook shank has too much going on and I'm not gonna mess with that. I literally just spread it around and do it like that. I don't make more of it than it needs to be. And we're pretty much done with our deer hair now. I'm gonna fold all of this back and get that thread right in front of it. Perfect. Now we're gonna go ahead and do our whip finish, hold it all away. Do yourself a nice four turn whip finish, slide it down and pinch that with your fingernails while you're wiggling the thread. You can feel that slack come. I'm gonna do another one like a three, whoop, I slipped there. There you go. One, two, three. Okay, we are all set. All right, now we're gonna do our trimming, all right? So right off the bat, we're gonna go ahead and trim the bottom of this. And then you wanna take your time. I do trim mainly in my hands. I'm gonna try to trim in the camera here, which is a little awkward for me. I wonder if I can hold it right here for you because I do like to angle it like so. And I'm gonna do my basic taper to this. You have to go against the grain. It's hard to trim deer hair with it. So that's why I had to pull it out of the vise unless I wanted to get up myself. You can take a bunch of time trimming deer hair as we all know, because it's the haircut of the deal. You took all this time to go ahead and make a, a tie a beautiful fly. You don't wanna kind of rush and make a bad cut on the haircut. So. Take your time doing this and trim your nice bait fish head shape. If you got some random hairs, a lot of times those long guard hairs that you initially tied in, you don't need as many of them as you would think. So if you have some stragglers, cut them out because they're just a nice transition into your craft fur and uh, body. Okay, we're going to just go ahead and taper this a bit more. All right, looking good. Whoops, <laughs> how many of us have dropped the fly in our waste bucket, huh? Don't go in there. All right, couple last ones. You can see how nicely this bead is hidden inside of this deer hair. And in this, uh, I can't show you tossing it up, but when you toss this fly up, it'll land so quickly, quietly, and sinks right down to the bottom uh, in any kind of depths, depending on how much tungsten you have, but it really is a neat bait fish pattern. The reason bait fish are great to fish is because you can go ahead and strip them, right? So you can lead a fish very nicely and you can go ahead and wait for the ambush. And as they come, then you can go ahead and strip that fly. And it's so much easier to fish than sometimes crab patterns and other patterns where you have to have exactly the right position. Uh, a bait fish like this, you can go ahead and be off by a little bit. And when that bonefish comes by or redfish and you give it a long and smooth strip, well, then it all works out great. They see it and they pound on it. What a beautiful taper that is. All right, guys, we're all done. I can trim here for a lot longer and I think we're going we're gonna to be done. So notice this wonderful body that we have with the Arctic Fox. If you have a little bit longer fibers here, now is the time that you can go lightly trim. Always try to trim on an angle, okay, to develop a little taper and random tips. You don't, I don't like anything square. This is Chewy's Minner, okay? And this is great in all sorts of sizes and weights. And that's gonna be one of your best shallow water minnow patterns. Hey. Thanks for visiting us, uh, with us here at Umpqua and enjoy a great fly time.